What is up guys? Welcome to our week two team builder for the GBA D League. As you guys know, we are 1-0 up plus four. So great start. Let's hope we can keep it going. However, our opponent this week is none other than Abra Fourth and his Newcastle Umbreons. Abe, I've played once before in the past. I won. Uh, this was in the uh, NPL, I believe, season five. And I uh, was replacing Rob, and the only reason I won is because I faked him out, making him think, not the actual move fake out, but I made him think that I had a Pyopa Berry on my Needle Queen, uh, because I forgot Victini was a Psychic type. So, yeah, there's that. Um, that's when I was a little less experienced. That was uh, more than a year ago, I believe. But uh, this time around, we have a lot more experience. We have a, uh, a team that I enjoy using thus far, anyway. And uh, we're using almost all of our roster within two weeks, so you guys are going to get to see new mons this time around uh, this week. As you can see, Abe's team is on the right, the Newcastle Umbreon made up of Jirachi, Mamoswine, Crobat, Mega Beedrill, Primarina, Miltank, Regular Rotom, uh, Lolan Persian, Como, Embor, and Superior. And the two mons that he decided to make his Z captains are Lolan Persian and Como, actually. A lot of people were uh, wondering why. Uh, you could have picked Jirachi and, uh, let's say Rotom, because I believe Rotom is a, is a tier 5, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, he chose Persian and Como. Como, of course, doesn't have its super Z-move released yet. It's super awesome fudge sauce uh, Z-move. forget the name of it, uh, something Soul. But uh, what it does have is Dragon Dance and Outrage. And that means that it can use Devastating Drake and a very powerful one, and that's something that I'm going to have to watch out for. Uh, meanwhile, Persian can use Z Parting Shot, which is also a little bit annoying because that can fully heal something. So, uh, two very good Z options for him. Uh, obviously, having access with Persian to things like Z Dark Pulse and whatnot. So, um, and Z Foul Play. But anyway, let's get into our team. So, the first mod that I notice as a threat on his team is the Mega B Drill. Obviously, that thing is a huge threat no matter where it comes from. Uh, no matter whose team it's on, so gotta watch out for it, so I had to plan in consequence. So the first time that I'm bringing Salamence Grandina, it is coming defensive, as you guys can see. We have a lot of defense EVs on this thing. Specifically, we have 244 HP, 220 defense with a bold nature, uh, 4 in special attack, 4 in speed F, and 28 speed. This thing comes all the way from Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness because of the move Refresh. Now let me explain the set a little bit. Uh, he has a lot of really good status options between uh, Toxic and Thunder Wave, specifically, uh, specifically coming off of things like Jirachi, uh, Miltank, the Rotom, so, uh, and Glare from uh, from Superior. So those are things I have to watch out for. I want to keep uh, Salamence not Toxic and not Paralyzed as much as possible. So Refresh is the best possible option for that. Um, and I don't believe that I have anything else on my team that can accomplish that. So Refresh is, uh, is pretty much the one option that I have. I could have run Lunar Dance on Cresselia, but I'm not going to. Flamethrower is there, it hits his team very well across, as you can see Jirachi does not like to take that well. If he brings Oblivious Mamoswine, because it's going to take a pretty big hit. Uh, Beedrill obviously does not appreciate Flamethrower, I don't want to run any physical attacks because there's nothing that covers his team as well as Flamethrower does. Obviously I can hit the uh, Lolan Persian, uh, Persian on the special side, which it doesn't enjoy. Um, Como shouldn't be switching into me, and Superior doesn't like Flamethrower, so that's very nice. Toxic is specifically there for his main switch-ins, two Salamence being things like Primarina. And uh, Alolan Persian as well uh, is a very uh, possible switch into a Salamence if he doesn't know if I'm running uh, like a, a bulky D dance set is still something that's possible against his team. So he's got to be careful with that. A Persian can normally take it on quite well, but when it's toxic, not as well. So there's that. Roost, of course. Uh, and this thing is tailored in its EVs to be able to take on uh, Mega Beedrill's Poison Jab. I take less than 40% from it meaning that I can take three as so long as I don't get poisoned. And if I do get poisoned, I have refresh. So that's the idea behind this set. Obviously, I could run Rocky Helmet, but I need the leftovers to dodge the three-hit KO from Poison Jab in case he poisons me. So I need to find a way to force him out and whatnot. Uh, obviously, this thing can come in quite safely on things like uh, Jirachi if it's not carrying Icy Wind, uh, on his Crobat specifically, uh, Miltank if it doesn't have Ice Punch, but even at that, I get off and Intimidate and I am bulky. Uh, Persian can only hit me so hard with... Uh, foul play because I am a negative sp uh, negative attack nature uh, with zero IVs to boot so um, So much I can do with foul play so quite nice. Uh, I like the Salamence set. Hopefully it puts in work It's my main switch into Beedrill. That's his biggest role It's very important and I need to conserve it for specifically that so moving on we have Serenity the Cresselia. So uh, I have some notes here. I'm gonna go over them So this is my check to Mamoswine and to Como simultaneously 
Uh, I heavily expect Toxic on Mamoswine or Knock Off, one of the two. Uh, Knock Off doesn't hurt me as much because losing my leftovers is not a huge deal. Toxic, though, does. I considered running Rest over Moonlight that you guys see in the last slot. But the thing is, if Como gets off a Dragon Dance and I put myself to sleep, I'm in a bad place all of a sudden. Like, a horrible, horrible position because it can just outrage twice and knock me out after its Z move. So, um, that's not the greatest. Obviously, I have Moonblast on there to check the Como. It's four times effective. Psy Shock is for the rest of the team. And I have Thunder Wave on there because it hits everything outside of Mamoswine. Nothing on his team likes to get paralyzed. Obviously, it doesn't hit the Rotom, but Rotom isn't a huge deal um, to my team. I, I can check it decently well with some of my Mons. But, um, specific, and I don't think it's coming either, uh, that's just something that I'm putting out there, but, uh, Thunder Wave hits Jirachi, hits Crobat, hits Mega Beedrill, hits, uh, Primarina, um, uh, you guys see what's not electric and not ground on his team, obviously, nothing wants to catch a paralysis from this thing, so Thunder Wave is probably the best option, I'm limited to 8 Moonlights, unfortunately, but, uh, it, like I said, this thing is just here to check Mamoswine and to check, uh, his Como, obviously it does a decent job at checking Embor as well, so long as it's not banded, so there's also that. Uh, mainly his physical attackers uh, can take on Crobat and whatnot, but it doesn't want to take on Beedrill, obviously, because U-Turn or X's are both going to hurt. So yeah, that's uh, that's Cresselia's role this week. Moving on to our next Mon, Kikyo, the Decidueye, Shiny Decidueye. Uh, this was a Mon that I threw on here to check Primarina, thinking that I could take on even a Specs Ice Beam, and not realizing that the Calc that I still had up had light screen on it from Alphonse from the week before. If you guys remember, our Metagross had light screen on it and I still had it up. So uh, that was horrible. Despite that though, Kikyo still switches in decently well to Primarina's stabs. Uh, even Specs Modest Moonblast, which I outspeed with the set, by the way. Not not a fully speed invested, like if you guys go to the calc, you'll see that Primarina hits 112, max speed Modest. But I expect Abe to speed creep slightly uh, a no speed or an 8 speed Cresselia. So, uh, I don't think he'll go up to the 112, I don't think he has a reason to, I think he'll invest the rest into either defense or uh, HP. The real Primarina s a set that I think he's going to bring, though I'll get to in a minute, but this thing can take uh, Moonblast, just roost them off, uh, and eventually you turn out or Spear Shackle the Primarina in. I take max, I think, 59% from a Moonblast with this set. The spread is, uh, by the way, I didn't mention Cresselia, is mainly defensive. It's 252 in HP, uh, 188 bold, uh, 36 in special attack, which helps me with Como specifically, uh, and 32 in spadef. And Kikyo is um, 148 HP, 4 in attack, 12 in defense, uh, careful nature, so it's minus special attack. It's got 196 in special defense with uh, a positive nature, of course, and 148 speed. I already explained the speed. The special defense was initially there for the Ice Beam. I modified the set in, uh, a little bit so that I'm taking less from Moonblast, so I know when to switch into it and whatnot. Obviously, Primarina can lock itself into Ice Beam. That would be a bad time for me, but if it is Specs, then I'll be able to scout for that and play accordingly uh, from that point on. I have a very big threat that you guys are about to see. Uh, if Primarina does happen to lock itself into Specs Ice Beam. So, Spirit Shackle, obviously, as you can see, his team does not appreciate this mod. Miltank is the only real thing that likes it. Uh, Persian, kind of, but it doesn't want to take a U-turn, uh, especially if I U-turn into something very threatening that I have at the very end of my team that you guys are going to see. Uh, I got Roost and Defog. Defog is nice for uh, Salamence and for Thunderous that you guys are going to see. Uh, but, yeah, um, there was no other move that I really wanted to run. I could run Leaf Blade, but... Uh, Primarina is most likely not staying in on me regardless, so I'd much rather get off the Roost or Defog, uh, something of the sort. Overgrow obviously doesn't help in this case, but other ability isn't released yet, so no long reach, unfortunately. Um, but it doesn't really matter because he's unlikely to run any Rocky Helmets or anything of that sort, so. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, Kikyo. Pretty uh, straightforward. Spear Shackle, U-Turn, Roost, Defog, mainly specially defensive, so there we go. Moving on to our next Pokemon. One of my biggest threats uh, to Abe's team is Ace the Infernape once again. Obviously, you guys saw Infernape sweep uh, up the game last week. It was it was a mini sweep. It was just two Mons with close combat, Tauros and Sylveon. Uh, but this time, I feel like it can do a lot more. <laughs> it's very interesting uh, as a set. I have 16 HP EVs, 204 Adamant attack, uh, 84 in defense, and 204 speed. We'll explain the speed first. That is enough for Adamant or Jolly, Jira uh, sorry, Jolly or Timid Jirachi, excuse me. So base 100s, obviously, which on his team he only has one of, being the Jirachi, but that's a good enough uh, benchmark for me. Uh, I have Fire Punch, Thunder Punch, Swords Dance, and Endure. So the point of this set 
is to set up a Swords Dance when I scare something out or on something that can't kill me. Like I said before, Primarina, if it locks itself into Specs, Ice Beam has to deal with this all of a sudden. Uh, and I get up a free Swords Dance. As long as Rocks aren't up, I'm still at full. Uh, and then he has to worry about like a Focus Ash. So, um, Fire Punch. Uh, you guys can see that I'm Blaze and not Iron Fist. That's because Thunder Punch already knocks out the things that I want it to at plus two, regardless of whether I'm Iron, Fi uh, Iron Fist or Blaze. Fire Punch, on the other hand, has a little bit more trouble. So Fire Punch is going to be there for Jirachi, for Mamoswine, obviously. It has Thick Vat, but it doesn't appreciate a plus two Fire Punch from Blaze Boosted um, Infernape. Neither does Crobat. Crobat's more than likely going to be taking a Thunder Punch, though. Beedrill drops even to an unboosted Fire Punch. Uh, Miltank can take it quite well thanks to its Thick Vat. He has two Thick Vat Mons. Rotom doesn't take it. Um, Alolan Persian gets to it KO'd and has no way to uh, Oak Homey back unless I'm already severely weakened. Uh, Como can take both of my attacks. Uh, Embor doesn't appreciate a plus two Thunder Punch, and Superior drops to uh, a plus two uh, Fire Punch, obviously, and maybe even a, a neutral one. So, um, yeah. So, you guys are probably wondering why I'm running Thunder Punch over Close Combat uh, on this set. Obviously, Close Combat would be able to hit the Thick Fat Mammoth Swine, it'd be able to hit the Mill Tank, the Persian, and knock it out, the Embor. The problem with this is the Mon that I most expect him to bring is Primarina. And I can even see a physically uh, defensive Primarina coming against me. Um, just because it checks Infernape quite nicely if it's uh, carrying a Kebia Berry. Uh, because Infernape obviously gets Gunk Shot, but I wouldn't be able to knock out the Primarina. Because Infernape has less physical attack than Greninja, I believe, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Greninja could have less. I could be wrong on that, I'm not checking, but this is something that Lars did last season with his Primarina. He ran Kebia against Mono, uh, Monotui, and it ended up working out for him, so... Uh, yeah, uh, I could see that for my Infernape specifically, uh, because they have very similar coverage, those two. They can't hit Primarina super effectively with their stabs, they're both resisted, uh, but they do have access to a physical poison move, so I could see that, that coming, so, uh, that could end my sweep immediately. So I didn't really explain the sweeping, uh, aspect of Infernape. Uh, the defense EVs that I have, uh, coupled with the HP mean that he has a, an extremely low chance of Okoing me with, um, with Mega Beedrill's Adamant Poison Jab. He's likely to run Adamant against me because I have nothing that hits his uh, his Jolly Speed tier. So Adamant is more than likely, and if he hits me with an Adamant Poison Jab, my chance of living if rocks aren't up is extremely high, so I wouldn't even have to endure. Um, so I can set up a Swords Dance in front of it. I have a Salic Berry, right? So you look at his team. If I get off an Endure and a Swords Dance, one after, well, Swords Dance first, then Endure, uh, I can sweep through his team so long as Mill Tank isn't above uh, 50%, I believe. Uh, so long as uh, Como isn't alive anymore. If Persian is uh, is weakened as well, I can sweep through his entire team. His Mamoswine needs very, very little damage if it's like max bulk. So uh, Blaze comes in handy, obviously, with a lot of the Okos. Uh, I count a non-invested Jirachi, like non-bulk invested Jirachi with an Akaberry, and I believe at plus two with Blaze, I can Oko it through the Akaberry with Fire Punch, if I'm not mistaken. You guys can double check that, but uh, pretty much his entire team drops to this thing at plus one speed. Obviously, he'd need a Scarfer to check me. The thing is, Abe is probably going to panic when he sees Swords Dance, and he's going to want to revenge me with, um, with something like Crobat. What I'm going to hope happens is that he has a weakened Mon on his team. I scare something out like Mega Beedrill, bluffing Scarf, go for Swords Dance, have him switch out into his weakened Mon, I knock it out with a Fire Punch, he goes into Crobat, clicks Brave Bird to revenge me, I click Endure, get my Salic Berry, and now I'm plus two, plus one. And then I can do a lot of work to his team. So that's Ace, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there's a lot of little intricacies with the EVs, of course, but you guys see them all there. You can run Calx on your own if you'd like, but uh, I pretty much explained everything that I needed to. Uh, I'm really hoping not to see Mill Tank. Uh, Como, I think, is coming, but I can weaken it, and I'm really hoping that his Primarina is my answer to uh, his answer to Infernape. It would have to be physically defensive, though, and then I have something else to take advantage of it. So, second to last, uh, two Mons that I heavily debated on bringing were Metagross and Pillowswine. The problem with Metagross is that it's not as bulky as Pillowswine, and I need something to take on Beedrill. Like, I can't let his Beedrill in for free at all with this team. The only Mon that does that up until now is really just Cresselia. Um, kind of Decidui, but not really, and I have an answer to switch into his Beedrill, but if something's already in that's getting up rocks, I don't want his Beedrill to come in after, so I decided on Pillow Swine, 
And uh, we're running Adamant, Thick Fat with EV Light, and the EV spread is 252 HP, uh, 60 attack with an Adamant Nature, 196 defense. So this gives me the best chance of not being too KO'd by uh, a U-turn from Mega Beedrill. Uh, with the attack investment, after Cresselia's Moonblast to Como, even max HP Como, I knock it out with a nice shard so long as rocks are up. So I need that little 6% from rocks, but that's it. Uh, Earthquake does a ton to be drilled. The, uh, the attack investment also ensures that I two hit KO non HP invested uh, Mega B drill with Ice Shard uh, after a round of rocks. So if he wants to stay in for whatever reason, I can click Ice Shard twice. Uh, Ice Shard also deals with uh, Como, like I mentioned before, deals with his Crobat to some extent, uh, forcing it to roost at some point, allowing me to get off an Earthquake. Stealth Rocks are really good for his team. As you can see, things like Embor, Superior, uh, Primarina, Mega B drill. And uh, even Mamoswine and Crobat do not appreciate getting chipped down by rocks. His hazard removal options are extremely limited to Crobat and Mega Beedrill. So should I um, be able to get up rocks, they're more than likely going to be staying up. And you see the last move slot there, Protect. Now, this is something that I like to unconventionally run on some of my Pokemon. Uh, I have did it a lot with Mega Gardevoir back in GPC Season 5. And I'm doing it this time with Pilliswine. The reason being, should Primarina come in as an easy switch in to this Pilliswine, and I don't go for Earthquake, I go for Stealth Rocks, I can protect, see what it goes for. If it locks itself into a water move, I have a switch into Decidueye. If it goes for Moonblast, I have a choice between staying in, switching into Decidueye and scouting for specs, or switching into Cresselia. Cresselia, obviously, I want to conserve for Como as much as possible, but if it comes down to it, for example, if Como doesn't come, then I can switch in my Cresselia quite safely and uh, be able to Moonlight up on the uh, on the Primarina, maybe get off a T-Wave on it, and then proceed to start Moonlighting up, praying for Paras, and start Psy Shocking it down. So that's the idea there, uh, but behind running Protect. This also scouts for other potential uh, choice mons in general, things like Jirachi and whatnot. Uh, obviously, Jirachi, if it is a physical uh, attacker, if it's physical Scarf, I have something for it, and it's the last one on our team. I did mention it before. It is Thunderous. Now, this Thunderous is primed to sweep as well. So, I'm bringing both an Infernape and a Thunderous once again, which are both set to sweep. Uh, I did this in week one, and I'm doing it again, but Thunderous is yet another set that is very, very different from what you saw in week one. And let's take a look. So, we've got Eneru, the Thunderous, once again shiny. Jolly Prankster. Now, Prankster is actually quite important in this match, as opposed to last week. We've got Fly, Brick Break, Bulk Up, and Rest. The EV spread is 132 HP, 84 attack, 204 defense, uh, with a uh, Jolly N Nature, which I mentioned, 36 special defense, and 52 speed. Uh, EVs, of course, once again with that nature. This puts me just slightly over max speed Como, so I can outspeed that which is quite nice in case it comes specs. Everything else on his team doesn't like dealing with this at all. So Mamoswine, I already mentioned my response was Cresselia. Should I bring in my Thunderous on something like Crobat or scare out the Primarina or something like Alolan Persian and I get up a bulk up, there's almost nothing on his team that can revenge kill me with one bulk up up. Mega Beedrill. If it switches in, for whatever reason on my Thunderous, that shouldn't be his switch in, but if it switches in, thinking that I'm going for like Sludge Wave on his Primarina or something, something random. Obviously, I need to get up another bulk up because Beedrill is insanely strong. But once I get up a second bulk up, his Beedrill does a max of 39% to me. The same that we saw with Grandina early on. So, this means that um, once I'm at plus two, his Beedrill cannot break me because I can get up yet another bulk up and then rest, even if he poisons me. And then he's doing a max of 25%. He would need a crit to get through me. Now, you see Fly. Obviously, um, Thunderous has very limited options when it comes to uh, flying physical attacks. So, uh, using one of its stabs. Uh, Fly was not originally on this set. I changed it last minute. It was originally Sky Drop. However... <laughs> I found out that Abe has a very heavy team, and I mean this quite literally, his mons are heavy, they weigh a lot, and Skydrop only works on Pokemon that weigh less than you. Mamoswine weighs more, Como weighs more, Embor weighs more, even Crobat weighs more than Thunderous for some reason which I still haven't figured out. 
So I had to switch it up for Fly. I'm not going to put myself in a position where I can get 1v1 by a Crobat because I didn't have a move that could hit it. Brick Break is four times resisted. You guys are probably wondering why I'm bringing Brick Break uh, at plus one. I can actually um, close to two hit KO a Jirachi uh, if it's not offensive, if it's not defensive. Uh, I can destroy Mamoswine once I'm at plus one. And the thing is, I'm faster than max speed Jolly Mamoswine, so unless he's Choice Scarfed, he would have to go for Ice Shard, uh, and Ice Shard does nothing after a bulk up. It does something like 32%, and I heal that off with, with leftovers uh, over time. Pretty much, this thing is indestructible um, throughout his entire team, uh, except for things like Special Como, and uh, if his superior... Also, my uh, Special Defense EVs, the way I evade my HP plus my Special Defense, his superior with HP Ice, which is likely to run, uh, actually does not three hit KO me. It's a very, very small, he needs three absolute max rolls from a non life orb, uh, timid, uh, superior. So pretty much I'm safe against that thing as well. The reason I wanted to run sky drop was because of one, the hundred percent accuracy and two, the, uh, the fact that it gives me an extra turn of leftovers because uh, I have a turn of invulnerability in the air. But the problem with that is, of course, that I can't pick up like half his mons, so I had to run uh, Fly, which of course can miss. It does have a 10% chance to miss, but it's a chance that I'm willing to take if it means that I can hit like five more Pokemon on his team. So that's pretty much Thunderous. This thing can destroy Abe, 100%. I just have to play it right. I just got to be very, very careful with what I do. I have to make sure that I can knock out from Arena if I go for a fly. I have to scout for what his Scarfers are, what his uh, his Choice Mons in general are. Choice Band, Choice Specs, Choice Scarf, everything. Jirachi with uh, Icy Wind, by the way, with this Spadef once again. Uh, very, very small chance to 3-hit uh, KO me with Icy Wind. Uh, HP Ice is a different story. But I would expect Icy Wind because it deals with uh, Salamence a little bit better. I'm expecting like a Shooka Berry uh, Wish Icy Wind set on Jirachi if it does come. Uh, I don't have it in the six Mons that I think are coming. Uh, the Mons that I think are coming are... I'll actually show you guys my layout right now. Um, yeah, pretty much this doesn't change. Uh, the six that I think are coming are Primarina, Mega Beedrill, Mamoswine, uh, Alolan Persian, Como, and Superior. Superior has a very good matchup against me. It gets sub boosts very, very easily on me, so I do see that thing coming. And so long as he has a response to my Infernape, which in my mind is going to be his Primarina, then uh, his Superior can do work to me. So that's the six that I think are coming. Uh, should that change, so be it. I can change it on the layout, as you guys saw last time, but these are the six that I think are coming. So I've, I've prepped in consequence to his entire team, but I'm really, really banking on these six. So we'll see what happens. I actually should be having the battle very, very soon, um, considering um, what time it is in Australia right now. So uh, I'm going to hit up Abe, see what he wants to do, see if he wants to play right away, and we're going to jump into it. So I'm really confident with this team. i got to import all my sets into the calc. Got to make sure light screen isn't up ever, and uh, then we'll get into it. But that's it, guys. Uh, if you guys are hyped to see if we can pull out probably one of the toughest games of the season, I would say. Uh, this one and Jolt in week four are going to be the hardest ones. Jolt's team is stupid. Uh, I don't know why I let him get Mega Kang, but anyway... Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty much it. If we can pull this one out, then we're looking really good for this season. Like, uh, pretty much Jolt is the biggest obstacle in my blinders right now. So, that's it, guys. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. As always, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you guys are enjoying this, uh, this content coming from this channel. And, uh, I will see you guys later. Peace.